Welcome to episode eight of Build an Etsy Business with me, Nick, and Lou. I'm sure most of you know the setup by now. Lou has been hard at work creating new content and new items for our Etsy store that we're building together. And in this week's episode, I think you're going to see just how much work goes into creating um, a really nice home decor piece in wood. Um, I've got two things coming up from Lou in this show today. Uh, the first piece is a really fascinating um, bit on the direction of the shop and more of the more of the products that Lou is going to be making and the thought processes behind it um, that, that that pushed her into making. Uh, these decisions. Um, we're going to talk about these decisions that she's made at the end of the week. I have a mentoring session every week with Lou on a Friday and we're going to be going over those details that she's talking about in this video together then. Um, and then a bit later on she goes in detail uh, making some shelves which I thought was were, was fascinating watching watching her video back before I put it up here for you guys. Um, so let's just get straight into it. Let's, it. It's the Lou show today. Um, she's she's dominating the show. I'm going to give you the stats and data at the end of my thoughts, um, but let, let, let's let Lou uh, say what she's got to say. It's me. I'm here, hidden behind mounds and mounds of wood. I'm consumed these days by wood. So as you can see, you probably recognise these things. These are what's been in my shop lately. And I need to consider now to grow my shop quicker. Because at the moment, as you can probably tell, there's only really two things going in a week. It's very time consuming coming up with new ideas and making these things by scratch from the very first time as well. I'm experimenting all day, every day in here. A lot of the things I make they don't see the light of day because I'm not happy with them. Um, so it's very time consuming, but I'm pretty much there on what I want to make for the shop now. Focusing on, I've been doing lots of research through Etsy, the Etsy stores in my niche, the woodwork niche, rustic, Scandi style woodwork. And I've been looking at what are the best selling items. And that I think to start my shop off, is the best way to go. What's the point in selling, selling items that you just don't even know are gonna sell? So these are pro proven items that are selling in Etsy, and that consists of things like these shelving systems, um, trays, all sorts of trays, um, uh, these um, like bedside cabinets or uh, side tables, little shelves, all these sorts of things. And also uh, large shelving as well, just you know, just regular floating shelves, shelving with brackets, all that. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on. So there's going to be a lot more repetition because I'm going to be offering, as you can see, everything is one colour. So I'm going to be offering di eight different colours of wax because everyone likes something different. Lots of different sizes as well. So things will be a lot easier for me to make and it will free up way more time for me um, number one to sort out this workshop which is an absolute mess it's not it's not set up for manufacturing uh, there's stuff everywhere I won't even show you it's just a mess I'm ashamed of it um, but I need to set things up I need to make new workbenches new uh, new new work systems where I can go around the workshop and make things you know, really easily and in a more manufactured way, but keeping that rustic handmade style, but making things easier for me, a production system. Um, because when, not if, when the orders start coming through, there's just me making this stuff. So I need to have everything running really, really well so I can do repetition, repetition, and make all these orders for all the people that are going to be ordering. Um, and I don't want to be missing deadlines. That's really important for Etsy. As we know, you need to be on top of it. You don't want to let anyone down. You don't want any bad scores. Um, so making things and getting things out on time and offering different things uh, to your customer, that seems to be what Etsy is all about. So that's going to be what's happening soon. And it's also going to free up time for me to make the bigger items that I want. So these are all small items. 
I really want to be concentrating on my own range of furniture in a Scandi sort of rustic style. Rustic Scandi, I'm calling it. It's a popular style at the moment and I've got some really good ideas. I'm talking about tables for inside and outside, console tables, coffee tables, all that sorts of things, bigger items, even down to making bed frames. I mean, come on, there's a lot to do there. And I can't, I can't practice, I can't make these things and practice when I'm doing all these things. So I've got to do the repetition of everything. Um, I'm gonna talk it over with Nick um, at the end of this week, uh, just to clarify that I've, I'm on the right path, what I'm thinking, uh, Nick's the expert. Um, and yeah, so I'll come back to you with an update of that uh, next week when I've had a chat with Nick about it, but it seems to be the right way to go. But for now, um, I'm going to make, I'm going to show you how I make one of these, but the slightly smaller version. So uh, let's jump into that now and get these machines on and I'll show you how I make one of these. Okay, so what do we have going on here? First of all, we need wood. We're making things out of wood. We need wood. A couple of bits of pieces here. Let's get the measure in. Measure twice, cut once. Good rule of thumb, that one. Okay, let's jump over to the mitre saw for this particular cut. Makes it nice and easy. Next bit, bit of wood. It's a bit thicker, so it's a bit, bit big for the mitre saw. So we're going to use the circular saw on this one cuts through it like a knife through butter beautiful job plop to the floor and then onto the table saw for this other cut again three different saws for three different cuts not just one saw does it all gonna make it as more as efficient as possible so here's all our cut pieces um, now these boards aren't joining together very well, so we need to sort that out, get rid of that gap. So we're gonna go over to the jointer, planer. Here we have this beast of a machine, which is very noisy um, and very sharp. That is a blade spinning there. So make sure, Lou, keep those fingers away from that blade. And basically what this is doing, it's like any hand planer really, um, just get those um, ends there really nice and straight and flush so when they are placed together nice little close up here um, they sit together really really well um, with no gaps so let's have a look at that now there we go and when they're together look no gaps so you're gonna have a really good strong solid joint there onto the glue up easy glue up this one just two pieces together um, make sure you can put gloves on when you're spreading this out I just clip off a finger <laughs> makes it a lot easier um, it's horrible stuff to get on your fingers it takes ages to come off it doesn't really wash off very well put these together clamp them together whilst it's drying and what we're looking for is a really nice squeeze out here get that glue squeezing out of that joint beautiful look at that that's going to be a really good strong solid joint now these are the shelves and again the backs of these they need planing as well so they sit on that backboard nice and flush to the surface um, which when we screw them on will give us um, a much better finish and stronger joint. Uh, these are the front edges. They're a bit square. So we're going to use the palm sander here just to round them off. So it looks nice, aesthetically pleasing and uh, nicer to touch. Don't want all those jaggedy edges. Okay, so our boards now are glued up and dry nice and solid let's just scrape off that glue there we don't want that bunging up our belt sander so we're using the belt sander here just to flatten this off make it nice and smooth we're going to finish that off with the palm sander again just round those edges those sharp edges rounding them off all lovely makes it look nice and feel nice now I'm marking 
the holes for the screws to join those um, shelves onto the backer plate. Choosing our drill bit. Which one do I want? That one? No. I think that one. That's the better one. Okay. You want it to be slightly smaller than the screw you're using. Always best to do a pilot hole rather than screwing straight into the wood because you could split it. This is a countersunk bit and this makes sure the screw head just sits underneath that wood so it's not sitting proud. These are nice big solid wood screws, nice and long so those floating shelves are nice and strong for whatever goes on them. Not that anything too heavy is going to go on it but it can hold a lot of weight. Checking for squareness, perfect. Here we go, so we are nearly at the finished product here, but there's one thing missing, how do we attach it to the wall? These are keyhole fixings, and I'm just going to use this forcing a bit here, again, like the countersink bit, just to um, make sure that these um, keyhole plates are just sitting below the surface, gives it a more professional look, and stops it rubbing against the wall and damaging the wall, give a little knock in. Again, countersinking uh, those screw holes rather than screwing straight into the wood. That makes sure it doesn't split. Just drawing the keyhole here. So when I get the palm router out, um, I've got a guide so I can get that hole nice and professional finish there without big gouges. Look lovely and neat. Let's get that plate in. Screw it in. And that just sits below the surface there so it doesn't damage our wall get some nice strong wood screws in to hold that plate in place that's going to be taking the weight be surprised how much weight these can hold and the screw that's how the screw just sits in there so they're really easy it just needs two screws into the wall and then you just put that on um, here I'm just doing a bit of hand sanding, finishing off, a bit of quality control, making sure everything's nice. Looks like I'm giving a bit, a bit of a, a bit of a body search here. Clearly getting far too close to my work. Weird. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we're getting to the finishing touches now. So here we are with the wax. This is called Rustic Pine, this colour. Lots more colours coming soon. So customers got more options for their particular decor uh, 26 years of painting coming very handy here <laughs> putting on the wax just taking off the excess there once it's all done giving a good buff and uh, we then leave that to dry and we've got a finished product so it'll take a day to dry that properly and then it'll go to the same color as a slightly bigger one but here's the finished product looking all lovely and I'm really pleased it's come out really well. There we go, finished product. So let's get that in the shop. So as I said, it was the Lou show this week and that was some great, great information that she was sharing, especially I think uh, around the choices that she's making in regards to items that are gonna go into the store. Uh, shelving is always popular on Etsy and I'm gonna be talking to her at the end of the week about certain sizes and dimensions of shelving. Because when uh, Lou was talking about looking at what's winning and what's selling, she's absolutely right. But remember when I talked to you about looking at best sellers and what's working, it's always good to bring your own twist to that market. And this is something that um, Lou and I are going to be talking about at the end of the week. And also, we're going to be talking about SEO as well. And I think next week, if I remember... Um, I'll do some live work with you guys on SEO uh, in Lou's store as well. So lots of great stuff to come. Remember, I don't know, uh, a lot of you won't know this, but in July, I'm actually flying to England to meet Lou, to spend some time with her, um, film some great content for you guys, and really get under the lid of building and growing an Etsy business in a way that I can't do unless I'm with her. So I know lots of you are talking about details that, that you want to know and want to understand, packaging, postage, um, organisation. Uh, Lou, Lou touched on it um, in today's video, didn't she? She was talking about organisation of her workshop. She's absolutely right. Once the store starts to sell, um, everything needs to be in a system and a process. 
And at the moment, she's not there yet. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, nothing's going to happen overnight. She's not going to get 50 orders overnight or anything like that. So um, we've got time. But the thinking that Lou is doing is great. And um, I'm going to refine and adapt and twist um, her ideas to fit the marketplace and also come up with unique uh, unique aspects to the products that stand Lou apart from everybody else. So I hope you enjoyed today's um, today's show. Let's get into the shop. Let's look at the data. There's still not much to look at, but I'll explain whatever data is there to you guys. Any comments about today's show or in general on what you'd like to see um, in Build a Business, um, any co- anything that is on your mind, just put it into the comments. You know I answer everyone. Okay, let's get into the store. Okay, here we are in Lou's store, and as always, there's something new to look at, and this was the shelving unit that she filmed today, and doesn't it look lovely? And I know some of you have commented on Lou's photography. Um, We did a bit of work on it a while back, and I think Lou has really nailed um, the quality here of her photography. Um, It's simple, it's effective, and most important of all, it shows the item in various um, different size, you know, different sides, Uh, and closeness and distance. Uh, Really, really good. I'm not going to click on the video because Lou's computer's really slow right now. If I click on the video, it doesn't load. It takes like two minutes to load, so I don't want to do that. But I'm just showing you some of the pictures so you can see the detail um, of what what we're working with, with with photography. So with photography, your aim is to make sure that you're showing customers everything they need to know. And the things that people need to know um, about this shelf are the size, um, the how many shelves are on the shelf, uh, close-ups to show the context uh, and, and, and quality of the wood. Uh, and this is exactly what we're looking for. So this is one of two new products in the store. Um, feel free to go and look at the store if you want to see the other, the, other, the other product that's in there. There's two shelves in the store. So onto the stats, and this is starting to look more promising in terms of the visit type that's coming into the store. So you can see this is lifetime stats, and you can see slowly, 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 this is mostly YouTube. All of this is YouTube. Now, when we get to around here, things are starting to straighten out now. And if we look down here at the visits, where the traffic is coming from, it's it's shifting over into Etsy. So all of this is Etsy. This is basically YouTube. So anything coming from YouTube is going to be on this side, and this side is where we want the visits to end up. So this is traffic coming in from Etsy. So I'm I'm per- I'm absolutely happy with the way this is going. This is this is starting to pan out quite nicely. Uh, summer on Etsy, June, July, and August is quiet, um, and then it picks up at the end of August as we move into Q4. And obviously, a lot of Lou's products are going to be in demand August onwards as people start to look inwards, uh, focusing on their home and decor and so on. We've got so many new ideas, um, as Lou has been talking about. I'm going to visit her in July. Um, there, I'm sure there's going to be some amazing new things coming into the store and new ideas for this series. So, as always, I hope you've enjoyed it. Get into the comments. Let me know what you think. Do you like this? This episode was longer. So this was longer than the other ones. Uh, let me know, is it, some, is it longer? Do you want longer episodes with this? Um, because I was thinking sort of 10 or 12 minutes, but I did notice some people saying it's too short. Let me know about the length. Is this a better length? Um, and if so, um, Lou and I will talk about making these episodes slightly longer. Thank you for watching.